You should go to the training room and warm up your aim one last time before deployment. It's probably not a bad idea. My aim kind of sucked when I was shooting earlier. Oh, sweet. Gun range. Go to the gun range. Have yourself a time. Go to the gun range. Shoot yourself a mime. <laughs> okay. I'm a bit punchy tonight. Hey, that's an old elevator card. Where did you find it? It seems broken, but I think I might be able to fix it for you. Elevated card added to the inventory. Sweet. I didn't even know what I was doing. Oh, I unlocked an ominous room. Okay. What's in there? Oh, sweet. Bandages. It's just all sorts of sweet loot. Stop moving so I can talk to you. Are you really going to work with Sergeant Branna? How can they let a rookie like you fight side by side with a member of the Raven Squad? Not the Raven Squad. I am punchy tonight. I like it. As soldiers from the core, mm, <laughs> we need to be in top condition at any given time. Otherwise, we won't be able to protect the world during emergencies. Okay. So it seems like it's the wrong spelling of core. Even though he's not shooting, I should leave him alone. Should I? All right. Can I blast him? Yeah. I want to train. I want to blast him. Oh. Shooting at certain body parts may paralyze the enemy, making them unable to act for one turn. Try shooting at your target's arms to paralyze them. All right. Um... I guess I'll shoot at that one, and I'll shoot at the other one. Kapow! Got him! Damage. That's Paralyzer. If your morale reaches 100%, you will reach Euphoria, which will grant you critical damage to all your attacks. Sweet. Oh, nice. Um, Let's do the arm thing again. Got her. And you're paralyzed. Sucka. All right, let's get her again. Well, I could only max out at 99 anyway. So crit damage is good. I like the I like the system where it's like you, you have a meter, but there are sort of... There's this thing that can happen sometimes in games where it's just like, you know, especially in like role-playing games where it's like, oh, you have a mana bar and you use your mana for skills and then once your mana is used up... Then you have no more skills, and then you have to you get your mana back so you can use skills again. It's it's actually kind of a boring system. It's just like, oh, there is a resource, you use the resource up. That's pretty much it. But what I like about this is sort of the sense that like wh where the resource meter is matters. So like you can want to push it, and you also want to avoid getting it all the way down too low. But the thing is like there's a reason to to, to hold on to your morale. But then there's also a reason to use your morale because you have skills that use it up, and then you also don't want to get don't want it to get too low. So it's it's a single resource bar, but you have to think very specifically about how to manage it, and that is just a really clever game mechanic. I like it a lot. I like little things like that that sort of cause you to sort of like because that's where you get really great granularity in a game. That's how I know I'm kind of going off about this, but that's where you get the feeling in a game that you have sort of like. A range of you know playability options it, your it, your ch your choices are meaningful not just in sort of like choosing between a and b but also in like how you choose things and it's i don't know it's nice body targeting system has been added to our notes it is it's very sim it's very similar um it, and this is a thing that has become i think more common recently in games especially where so I did okay for for those of you who have not been longtime listeners to um, the podcast. I did. I think one of the very first chill rants is about this issue of granularity, and I talked a lot because I was really dissatisfied with the with Star Wars Squadrons because Star Wars Squadrons was trying really really hard to essentially be the old X Wing and Tie Fighter games, 
but I think the game really missed what was actually great about those games in terms of resource management and the sort of the granularity of how like systems within your individual ship worked and how you had to sort of balance them against each other. That is the kind, like that is to me, as sort of like someone who is a 42 year old man, when I play a game that feels more immersive than when you just have like, 8,000 buttons to push or 10,000 abilities and you have to pick between them and you're sort of scatterbrained and you feel like you're twitching constantly because you're actually thinking about like, oh, I need to lower the power to the engines at this point so I can increase power to the shields or increase power to my weapons. Like that sort of, you guys know this, some of you probably know this about me already, but I tend to prefer resource management type things. And so when resource manage type mechanics are built into games that don't normally have them, I appreciate that a lot. So let's see, we got that, um, that card. All right. I mean, well, okay, let's go back. Does, does training do anything more than just, oh, he's ready for, he, he shot a few target dummies and we're all ready to go. <laughs> all right. But yeah, like, I don't know. I just, I, I wish sometimes developers would understand that, I mean, I think there are developers who understand this. This is not sort of painting with a broad brush, but it definitely seems... Lauren can correct me on this, but it definitely seems to be true, or at least more true, with, like, AAA games where there's a tendency to sort of lose sight of those those little things that make a game feel really smooth and just good to play. I don't know. Again, this may be because I'm a total boomer and I like older style games. Yay, Lauren's back. <laughs> Lauren Lauren is still kind of working so you all again everyone needs to send Lauren their love because I don't know she's our she's a, it is sort of weird that you're not showing up maybe it's because you're a mod I don't know anyway so let's use the the elevator card okay can I get in the elevator now okay it's kind of annoying that you have to then activate the elevator again <laughs> All right, so what do we want to do? Let's, uh, barracks, bottom floor. What do, what do we want? Yes, class, yeah, they do. So the thing with, like, is the, it's not just Final Fantasy games, though. It's kind of JRPGs across the board. I mean, I have particulars on this. I have argued in the past that there is no such thing as a JRPG. But, like, um, you, you see this in, like, the, the Grandia games, Yeah. Well, no, you see, the thing, Lauren, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is not that, like, it's not sort of indie versus triple A. It's, it's like, I don't know. I feel like a game like this, because it's spare in other assets. So the thing is, like, there are plenty of triple A games that have, like, really incredible granularity in a lot of their systems. But it's harder to see that sometimes because... There's so much else going on in the game. Like there's these beautiful environments or you have like really sort of like um, fast paced frenetic combat or you have like, you know, really elaborate skills and combinations that you have to remember. So if like there is a menu that has like r a lot of depth, you're not going to notice it as much. But in a game where that has otherwise has fairly simple mechanics, I think if they're and I think this is true of the X-Wing and TIE Fighter games as well, because those games were not otherwise mechanically really complex, it's easier to notice those sort of like those granular things that you have to do, because in many ways the game is otherwise limited. It has to find those like moments of sort of like immersive engagement that are less dependent upon sort of like creating a beautiful world and like a beautiful character to like interact with it. So we're gonna go to the bottom floor. <laughs> All of that to say, we're going down. <laughs> hmm. Ominous music. So you know something on, um, uh, ominous is coming. Huh. Let's check this place out for a second. Okay. That's not good. Rut row. Oh, sorry. The point I was going to make are loading. Oh, geez. So before we get into what is almost certainly going to be a sad, creepy bit. Um, the point that I was trying to make before is that so it, 
you see this a lot in JRPGs across the board, where like there will be a resource meter. Like for example, in the Grandia games, there was both like ma- there was both magic points and skill points, and they're basically just resource bars. It's like once you run out of it, then you have to replenish it, and it was pretty trivial to replenish. And it's the same in Final Fantasy games, but that to me is not what's interesting about Final Fantasy games. It's the incredibly in-depth storytelling often really and especially in the more recent iterations of the final fantasy games the incredibly like beautiful like environments the incredible cinematics like that's what a final fantasy game is to me at least all right let's do this production set to 36 fail rate 0.056 percent that's pretty low fail rate Median variation skill applied one point six five three. <laughs> it isn't. It is an ominous room. It's been added to my notes. So they genetically engineer baby soldiers. Is that what we're supposed to get out of this? Pull the plug. Pull the other plug. Applying correction to model two. Oh, okay. Current progress sixty four percent complete. Yeah, I know I have a bad tendency to sort of make things about like, oh, AAA versus indie. It's like, neither is better or worse than the other. It's that like, <sighs> like there are relative advantages and disadvantages to doing things in particular ways. And I personally would appreciate more people, not just indie developers, seeing how like, if you if you have a if a game is a lot if there is a lot going on in a game then a lot of the sort of subtle little things can get lost as a result there are more there are risks associated with larger budget games that's true but i don't necessarily think that's it so lauren and i have had private not private but sort of like conversations about this over time and one of the the things is like i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that so i guess this is tonight's rant tonight's rant is about this (laughs) um it has a lot to do with the fact that triple a games are made by massive groups of people you're talking like especially with like larger studios like ubisoft or ea hundreds of people are working on a single game Whereas when you're talking about a lot of indie games, you're talking about a team of between like one and maybe 10 people, sometimes four or five people. And oftentimes those, if it is a small group of people, they have a more intimate relationship with one another and they sort of click in different ways and they don't necessarily need strict workflows and so forth. But when you're talking about like a game where just the underlying systems require dozens of people to work on, then in many ways the the bigness of the project functions in the same way sort of like the bigness of like a hollywood film hollywood films are not just products of i mean people i don't particularly like a lot of you know big budget action films but i think people do tend to sort of like oh this is like corporate art and it goes, it's terrible no that's i don't actually think what this what's going on there i think what you're looking at when you when you watch like say a mission impossible film or when you watch a marvel film is you're you're looking at something that has to be sort of industrially produced and industrial processes will tend to produce particular kinds of things you're not going to get like an indie art house film out of you know a film that requires like hundreds of people to produce because then otherwise like why do you have all of those cinematographers why do you have all those key grips like what's the point of having them if you're not going to do the big flashy stuff if you're not going to make like you know a mad max fury road or something like that if you're going to have all of those people you want to do the big explosive thing but in doing the big explosive thing you're going to lose a lot of subtlety whereas a game like this which is graphically not terrible there's not great fidelity here (laughs) um but because of the fact that it's sort of stripped bare the things that it does really great are sort of heightened because there isn't a lot of other stuff going on 
And so the feel of a like of an Assassin's Creed or a Tomb Raider or like modern Tomb Raider games, like that is an assault on the senses. And I think that's actually a good thing. Having that sort of like bah! feeling when you're playing a game is actually really great. I don't particularly like that feeling <laughs> when I'm playing a game. What I like is this sort of feeling where it's like you suddenly enter into a room and just the really simple like drone in the background tells you exactly what's happening. And also that fact that it was called the ominous room, so there was that. So this is actually so I'm going to I'm going to end my previous rant here with this little sort of coda. This little bit right here where sort of he realizes that like he is you know part of the problem he is the terrorist like this is the kind of game that is well not impossible to be made in the AAA space but highly unlikely to be made and part of the reason for that is because a lot of the sort of like military style games are themselves like directly influenced by and in sometimes aided by the United States military and military advisors. And especially when it comes to say like the call of duty games, the call of duty games are often vetted by either those military advisors or just like someone whose entire job it is to make sure that like you, you can depict aspects of the military or aspects, especially like the clandestine services in a negative light, but only up to a point. Whereas an indie game is not necessarily subject to those sort that sort of like those levels of con of control. So an indie game can kind of take that line a little bit further. Like I said, it's not like AAA games can't go there. They can't get into that sort of like questioning sort of like the meaning of like military action and so forth. But there's definitely a line that like mass produced games generally can't cross. So that's that. <laughs> Clip it. Send it to YouTube. <laughs>